today with our systems we have numerous wildlife and bird amphibian species uh, we've got the raccoon bobcat deer uh, wild turkey those sorts of things and numerous songbirds however if you went back to pre-settlement Native American times it would have been these open areas like this uh, was maintained part of the savannas and these open areas was maintained by large herbivore large grazers in Native American time we would we had elk here we had we had the bison or buffalo uh, of course deer and uh, deer, bear, even wolves, and mountain lions, in addition, would have been part of the fauna. And in keeping this Native American landscape open, savanna situations, and then open glades like this, these large grazers, such as the bison or buffalo, were very instrumental in that. They, they're not only, they scratch and they cause disturbance, they also graze these areas, and uh, they would extend the bloom time, the production time of some of these species a lot. And of course, when fire came through, it made it very, very hospitable to the large grazers. When you burn the old vegetation off, it causes it to go reproductive. It grows all new leaves and vegetation and seed stalks the next year really invigorates it. And, and these being all new growth is much more nutrient dense, nitrogen, carbohydrates. We'd also like to do a reading from Schoolcraft's book and diary again. This was in just outside of Raymondville, Missouri on Ashley Creek uh, once he left uh, Ashley Cave. This ridge appears to be a favorite haunt for elk and bear which have been frequently seen in our path. The enormous size of the horns of the elk give that animal appearance of singular disproportion, but it has a stately carriage and in running by throwing up its head, brings the horns upon its back, which would otherwise incommode, if not entirely stop, its passage through a thicket. In our uh, immediate area, we have the little town of Elk Creek, it was named for a remnant elk herd that was still used in that, that area when the settlers came. And according to Texas County history, we actually had prairie chickens there. And the prairie chicken uh, being an open grassland species doesn't do well with uh, lots of trees and woodland, which I think gives Elk Creek a special deal being that open that you could actually have prairie chickens there pre-settlement. And part of what made it uh, good for the prairie chickens and some other species is that you, ha you did have the large grazers, the bison or buffalo, and they would actually overgraze areas, trample areas, had trails. Uh, we have a buffalo clover grows yet today and it's named that because it grew in the buffalo trails. It's an annual. They would just all work together. The bison made bare areas, especially on top of hills, and this was uh, prairie chicken lakes or mating grounds. We now think of bison only being a western species, the Great Plains. However, according to documentation, in pre-settlement times, they had a range almost to the east coast. We do think the Ozarks and more wooded areas you went east, they were more family groups and not the large herds we picture in the western landscape. Today we think about wolves only being in the western United States and Canada, but uh, the documentation of a schoolcraft and early settlers uh, did give us wolves here in the Midwest. One reading from his book, while lying before a campfire last night, the wolves set up their howling, apparently within 200 yards of us. We had already been long enough in the woods and were sufficiently conservant with the hunter life to know that this animal will only attack man in cases of most extreme hunger. Another species, which is beginning to come back again today in our 
area as the black bear, and the black bear at that time pre-settlement was fairly numerous. Schoolcraft again documents him and uh, Pettibone, his traveling companion, actually was chasing one. Pettibone turned his ankle, but they was chasing one as, as part of their experience. And as you would surmise, the bear got away. As we gain more knowledge about the world around us, we are beginning to realize that this is all a interconnected system. When we're out on this native grasslands, we have native, native species that only depend on the plants here. We have certain butterflies that only use certain plants. We have certain plants that have to be pollinated by a certain butterfly, moth, some species of life. You know, the more you understand, the more you realize how interconnected these ecosystems all are and, and the, why we need to be preserving these. This video is part of a series on what the land was like before European settlement in Missouri. Watch our other videos on prairies and savannas, streams, glades, and Native Americans in pre-settlement times. And even if you're not from Missouri, we hope these videos can help you learn how to read the history of your own landscape.